Do you like money? Do you wish you were more financially independent? Well then buckle up because we have some tips for you today. Welcome to High Tech Redneck Money, where we help you navigate an ever-changing financial world. Thank you for joining us today. A few things I want to go over. We have a uh, new microphone, so I have to use a lot less post-processing. Uh, sounds a lot better. Hopefully that will increase the quality of the videos. Also, I have a bunch of stuff in the works, trying to learn a slightly new format, a little more conversational, a little less reading a script and showing clips. Uh, stick with me. We're going to have some good stuff coming up, and let's get into it. Today, we're going to be going over the recession-ready mindset, what you need to think about with a recession looming. Right now, we're in a market decline that could be turning into a market crash, and generally those happen during a recession. Sure, it's easy to let panic set in when headlines scream doom and gloom, but the thing is recessions aren't just about challenges. They're also brimming with opportunities if you have the right mindset and set yourself up for the opportunities coming. That's right, amidst the chaos lies the chance to seize new ventures and reevaluate your financial goals and emerge stronger on the other side. So what does it mean to have a recession-ready mindset? It means keeping your cool when everyone else is hitting the panic button. It's about staying laser-focused on your long-term financial goals, and even when short-term outlook looks bleak. The most important thing is embracing the challenges and opportunities for growth. The old saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Let's change it a little bit. Let's turn it into, when life gives you lemons, let's make a lemonade empire. So grab your financial umbrella, folks, because together we're going to weather the storm in style. A quick overview of what we're going to go over today. We're going to cover about four strategies that will help you set yourself up for how to survive a recession and come out on, on top on the other side. All right, so let's dive into the first strategy. It's your first line of defense against a financial storm. And that is building a rock solid emergency fund. Think of this as your financial safety net, your rainy day fund, your secret stash of cash, whatever you keep around for when life throws you a curveball. Now I get that this is not as exciting as investing or drop shipping or side hustles or any other form of making money but trust me folks when the chips are down having that emergency fund in place can be a game changer so what is an emergency fund well generally a rule of thumb is if you sit down and figure out your bills your monthly bills the actual bills that you have to pay you know your car payment house payment insurance phone bill internet electric those types of things you want to add all that up and then you want to save up enough money to run that for six months and that is generally the rule of thumb for a good emergency fund now why is this important well first off to be financially independent and to take the opportunities that are presented to you during a recession you have to be able to survive the recession and have money to invest in those opportunities. Now you're probably thinking, but where do I even start? Well, you start by figuring out uh, how much you need to budget out of your check to pay your bills. And then generally you want to try to figure out how much you can save. Is it 5% of your check, 10% of your check? I can't really tell you that. That's going to be up to you. So grab your piggy bank, your spare change jar, sell that uh, record collection that's collecting dust on eBay. Do whatever you need to do to get that emergency fund ready to go for the next recession. All right, strategy number two. Buckle up, we're about to journey into the world of investment diversification. Your investment portfolio should be like a well-balanced meal. You wouldn't want to fill up on just one dish. In the same vein, uh, diversification is all about spreading your investments across a variety of assets to minimize your risk and maximize your potential returns. But why bother diversifying? 
Can't I just put all my money into that one hot stock that everybody's talking about and get rich? Well, while it might be tempting to put all your eggs in one basket, the old saying, don't put your eggs all in one basket, is there for a reason. It's a recipe for disaster. You see, the market is about as predictable as the weather on a spring day in the south. One minute you're basking in sunshine, uh, soaring stock prices, the next you're caught in a downpour and the market crash. This is where diversification comes in. Uh, not everything falls at the same rate or the same amount. So when you diversify, you limit your downside risk. While you also sometimes limit your upside risk, you can readjust or shuffle your portfolio on in the good days to gain more upside. To start off with diversification, you need to figure out what assets are more risky or less risky. Generally, the conventional wisdom is to take 25% of your portfolio and put it in what you would consider risk-free assets. U.S. Treasuries, secured bonds, or cash. Uh, the other 75% you want to put into stocks, uh, bonds, real estate, currencies, uh, especially like cryptocurrencies, new age, uh, emerging stocks. Now in these new age, or well, all of the risk assets, you want to take your money and spread them out equally across your expected risk versus your potential return. And generally when your risk goes up, your return goes up, your, your potential return goes up. So what are your lowest risk, safest assets in the risk assets? Those are generally going to be real estate or property, uh, market funds or ETFs that are well established with low uh, upkeep costs. And your riskier assets are going to be individual stocks, uh, especially in the tech sector, or cryptocurrencies, and generally anything that has very high volatility. Now, with all this said, uh, diversifying like a pro might mean that you need to get a pro to help you diversify. But if you take the 75-25 and put 25% in non-risk assets and then split your risk asset portfolio, that last 75% evenly between high risk, high return, and low risk, low return, you're going to have a well-diversified portfolio that will help you weather any storms that come your way. And now, on to strategy three. We can't talk about making money without talking about how to keep more of your money. And the main way you do that is through reducing your debt or picking debt that has a lower interest rate. And trust me when I say that getting a hold of your debt is crucial at any time, but way, way more crucial during times of economic uncertainty. The tool the Fed uses the most during those times of economic uncertainty, especially during high inflation, is they will raise interest rates, which crush your asset prices, which also makes your short-term debt, especially credit cards, interest rates skyrocket. Uh, you say, well, but I have a low interest rate on my credit card, it's not a big deal, but they have enough loopholes in their contracts to jack your interest rate to whatever they want to, whatever they can get away with. So in general, you want to limit your amount of short-term debt, especially credit card debt. Uh, if you already have a lot, you need to make a debt management plan to mitigate your credit card debt and get it paid down. We'll loop back to that in a second, a uh, few different payment plans that you can use or strategies to eliminate credit card debt. The first thing you need to look at though is what spending can you do without? Like, do you have a latte addiction or a boba tea addiction? Or are you going multiple times per month to get your nails done or, you know, pedicure or something like that? Find those places where you can cut costs 
to begin with, and then you're, with your spending down, you'll have more money to pay off those debts. And once you get out from under those debts, you'll have more money to spend on the things you want. So now that we've covered budgeting and cutting out the unneeded costs to give you more margin of your pay to be able to pay off your debt, then how do you pay off your debt? Uh, there are agencies that can help you, debt consolidation agencies, things like that. Uh, that's one way to go. Sometimes they work out great, sometimes they kind of hurt you in the long run as far as credit for anything you're trying to do down the road. But uh, one good way to pay off, especially credit card debt or short-term debt, is figure out what all credit cards you have, your lowest card, and pay everything else's minimums, and then pay as much as you can on that one card balance. And as you pay that card balance off, you will pay less monthly for that card, or have less monthly that the minimum payment for that card, and you just keep paying that off until you pay that one off. And then you take the next card, and you do the same thing to that. And you'll be surprised how quickly you can pay off even quite a bit of credit card debt. And that is basically strategy three, or the third big point for getting ready for a recession, is figure out your debt, keep it in check, get rid of the expensive debt that you can because interest rates are going up. They will eventually crash down, but generally your interest rates on your debt go up, they don't go down. So just to recap, so far we've covered build an emergency fund. If you have investments, diversify those investments to limit your downside risk. And then finally, get a hold of your debt and make a plan or a budget so that you can work towards paying off that debt because it becomes more expensive or harder on you during times of economic uncertainty. With that, let's move on. And now for the final strategy. And this is the easiest one. It's the, the best thing to do in recession, especially if you have a lot of downtime. And that's to invest in yourself. Really, this is just doing what you're already doing. Watching videos, learning how to manage your money better, what investments to go after, what opportunities you might come across and which ones to jump on. Now, I know what you're thinking. But wait a minute, shouldn't I be like focusing on protecting my investments, tightening my budget, uh, all those things? Well, that's kind of the secret sauce. You uh, should always be investing in yourself, not just weathering the storm. It's about growing and becoming better out on the other side of the storm. Think about it like this. If the market takes a dip, your portfolio might shrink, but your skills and your knowledge stay the same unless you invest in those. Whether it's mastering a new skill, earning a certification, or diving headfirst into further education. And investing in yourself is how you open up new doors and new opportunities, even when the economy seems to be hitting us in the face. It's not just about uh, bettering yourself, although that should be one of your goals. Uh, the other thing is, is the job market gets much tighter and competition gets much tighter. So you need to make yourself stand out. You need to have a more diverse set of skills to make yourself more invaluable to keep your job. The key word when we started this was mindset. So not only are you building the mindset to protect your wealth and build it as the recession turns back into a better market but you also want to be keeping your mindset right so that you keep your spirits up and you don't make dumb decisions during a recession because you're full of anxiety or have low self-worth or self-esteem and there you have it folks it's the ultimate guide to navigating a market recession, keeping the right mindset, and owning it like a boss. Uh, we've covered everything from building a rock-solid emergency fund to diversifying what investments you already have, keeping your debt in check, and setting a budget and cutting unnecessary spending, and invest in yourself for long-term success and also just for a better mindset to make better decisions in a anxiety-filled atmosphere that a recession generally brings on. 
Over the next week or two, I'm going to be adding some uh, example debt letters and some credit repair tools onto the website and also some forums for asking questions and, you know, suggesting video uh, topics or whatever you want to talk about. So keep an eye out for that on the website and remember to like, share, subscribe, all the stuff, you know, normal calls to action. And with that, uh, thanks. Stay resilient, stay empowered, and remember the best is always yet to come.